Welcome back to making the sea monster stiletto. This is episode two. We're making a dagger with a sea monster theme inspired by this 16th century multi-tool. This thing was a spanner for a wheel lock, so that's pretty cool. Our first tasks of the day are gonna involve getting all these components fitting up, and that means that we need to round out the tang, we need to thread it, and then we need to make our guard and handle fit. Stop right there. Have you perhaps been cooped up at home longing for something interesting to do? Well, did you know from the comfort of your Apple or Android device or your PC, you could be playing the game that's taking the world by storm? Read Shadow Legends. They're today's sponsor and the game has a ton of depth. There's 13 playable factions. And today we're gonna talk about the High Elves. The High Elves, they're, they're the classic good guys. They live in their own walled kingdom of Avaria. They're easy on the eyes. Their queen is a powerful sorceress and they've been fighting evil since before that was cool. The problem is it's not always clear who side they're on. To find out more, you'll have to meet them in the story campaign. It's always good fun to summon some champions at the portal. Oh, look at that! We've got Mage Killer. Wow, that's not where I'm intended to zoom. I'm sorry, <laughs> Mrs. Steel. Ah, I'm sorry, Mrs. Steel. She's got some interesting swords. We've seen the High Elves, but I love scrolling through all the different factions, because in this game you are never going to run out of interesting champions to play with and look at and admire the incredible design work of Raid. They recently released their biggest ever update, which is the Doom Tower. It's 120 floors. You got 12 seriously badass bosses to take on. They've released new champions. There's more champions coming this month. There's over 500 in game. They got some fun tournaments in February as well as some Valentine's Day events. So please go click my link in the description below. You'll be supporting my channel and you're going to get 50,000 silver, 50 gems, five mystery shards, one day of XP boost, an energy refill, and one clan boss, Hexweaver. And of course, you'll be getting extra rewards here for the next 30 days. <laughs> So to continue fitting up these parts, I'm going to need to work out this hole here, get a slot in the end of our handle, and that's going to need some jewelry tools. Now we have jewelry tools, we just don't have a jewelry bench or a jewelry tool setup. <laughs> Jewelry Studio. The next step is we're going to use a carbide ball burr to carve out the slot for our tang to fit in the handle. And so there we go, the handle fits on the tang. We do need to head to the grinder and bring down this excess material, what we use to hold it in the chuck though. I very much like the rough shape of this. And it's now got me wondering what our next step is because it's looking like our next step could just be carving the sea monsters which is going to be ridiculously difficult. I want to show you some of these details. We've got to carve in the beak of this sea monster, its teeth, its eyes. We've got to carve scales in it the whole way up. It needs to flute the entire way up the handle and end somehow. This is going to require some planning. I've just been looking at this a little bit more, and I think I might have been wrong in thinking it's four sea monsters. See, I was thinking these things were largely two-dimensional, which is why you'd be able to fit four of them. But then I just had another look down here. And I'm seeing this set of sea monsters, they have a huge amount of, of extra shape to them, and they're canted enough that from this angle we can see here is two sea monsters. This is gonna help us understand the other orientation of view that we need for these sea monsters, and that changes things a lot. Let's see what we can do with pencil and paper. Apparently not much. <laughs> One of the things that I learned when I was doing a little bit of learning about engraving a couple of years ago is that if you can't draw it, you can't really make it. I just have so little understanding of how I'm gonna cut this thing out of here. And seeing I have so little skill at drawing on a flat paper, 
I have zero idea how I'm going to transfer something I don't even understand, can't even draw on flat paper, onto a handle that's round and then somehow carve it. So because I've had no idea where to start, I decided to chunk it up into small components. So I've been trying to work out what makes up the scales on our sea monster. And we've worked out it's a pattern of two scales, then three scales, then two scales, and so on and so forth. And what's been helping me from there is I drew two elevations. I drew the top view where our monster looks quite derpy as well as our side view where the monster looks quite scary. And it's helping the mental model of what this needs to look like fall into place. So I want to put some dicum on it. So this will hopefully give us some good contrast when we sharpie over the dicum. Have a look at these toolboxes. These are SGS engineering toolboxes. I've had their toolboxes since I was in the Barker Street Forge and we've got two of their toolboxes in Montana. They're so good I brought them with me. They kindly set us up here in the workshop. We've got three of their awesome toolboxes. If you're in the UK, these are the best value for money toolboxes there are. Big thank you to SGS engineering. Get your toolboxes from them, folks. God, this is incredible. This just doesn't compute as to how I'm gonna get these shapes out of it. This is ridiculously difficult to understand. I'm so perplexed about how we are gonna form these things that I think if we make a test piece out of some wood, we might be able to start carving and imprint in my head what it might look like in the end. Maybe that moves us forward. I'm shockingly actually getting quite hopeful here. I've removed a lot of material on the side of our handle, and it's starting to feel like that might be slimming down this axis of his head. And maybe within there, we're gonna get it. Taking to a bit of wood to carve this was utterly essential for a few reasons. One, I've really got a better grasp of how this is gonna look in its 3D shape. I've burnt it because the wood frays so much. So I wanted to kind of burn some of those hairs off. And tell me if I'm wrong, but I think it kind of looks like there's a sea monster in there. But the second reason I'm happy I did this is now I know what an absolute idiot I was for deciding that this would be a good project to make out of a bar of steel. Carving this out of a piece of soft pine was difficult, and I now have a bit of steel that I need to carve this out of. Do you know what I'm going to be doing for the next, you know, three weeks? On the bright side, we might just be able to make some good-looking sea monsters. What I've done this morning is I took a harder bit of wood, happens to be a file handle, and I've done another session of a work trying to build out what these 3D monsters are gonna look like, and it has helped me a lot. It has helped me work out the preliminary steps that we're going to need, and step one is gonna be as follows. We carve a very deep groove all the way around the handle, fluting around it. Then, we take that groove and we round it out so it has the correct general profile of our beasts, and then, because the cross-section the snout actually ends up being rectangular, we need to deepen out a big pocket here for where our jaws will be carved. For as long as possible while we're working on this steel, I want to make the most of a die grinder because it's going to remove a whole lot more material than my little micro motor. But our compressed air in the workshop only goes to here, so we need to send some air into the office. So we've used those uh, big push fittings and this nylon tube to run it around to here, but we're out of this stuff. So we are gonna send it into the office with this six millimeter tube and hopefully it delivers enough air for us to be able to use the tools we need. I got this bag of fittings on Amazon for like 10 pounds. All this hose wasn't that expensive either. And that's a neat way to quickly get air to places without all this expensive big pipe. Moment of truth. Let's air it all up. Oh, oh, wait. I should have turned that off. Ah! There's a leak! Where's the leak? Oh! I didn't plug it back in! <laughs> <laughs> It works! 
works. It doesn't look like the tank is leaking, which means theoretically our little hour and a half plumbing project has worked. The engraver works. So now we are going to scribe a line of a groove and start cutting on our actual hand. I started with a round ball burr and it was slip city, if I may say. Oh my goodness, that was terrifying me that this is, this is, this is what I'm stuck into. I then moved to this cylindrical burr and I'm able to put it in the groove and follow myself around way better. Next step, we're gonna make sure this groove is perfect by looking at it and moving it left or right, depending on where it needs to go. No, just keep slipping. This is so difficult. It looks like something Yogo's been chewing on. A carved steel handle for goodness sake. I'm going to be picking out little steel shavings from my hands for weeks. Feels like I've been in a fight with a porcupine. <laughs> Look at this. Here are my observations from having used this die grinder for the last little while. One, it removes material extremely fast. Two, because it removes material extremely fast, when you make mistakes, you make big mistakes. I have made dog poop out of this piece of metal. Finished portions that I hoped to not need to touch again, such as this end, are now not finished and are destroyed. This thing is slipping all over the place, it's causing all sorts of problems, but it is removing metal nice and fast, which means that step one is done, which means it's now onto step two, which is rounding out our flutes. I wonder if there might be a creative way I could speed this process up. <gasps> I think if we use our 2x48 belt grinder, we might be able to make some good progress. Speaking of these things, have a look. We're soon gonna be restocking these on the Alex Steel Co. So give it a few more weeks, you might just be able to buy one of these if you're fast enough. Okay, I found using the corner of the belt on the grinder is a great way of tightening up this transition and it's starting to really make it look like it is two bodies wrapped around. And just coming in here on the corner of the belt on the slack area, working all tight. Stage two is complete. We've rounded out the flutes. They do look like bodies wrapped around there and we'll even be able to make it a little cleaner looking than how this one ended up. Well, that's a very presumptuous statement to make there, Alec. <laughs> Who do I think I am? I think I'm about to make something better than these craftsmen of the 1500s. Absurd. If you want to see me suffer, then hang tight for the next episode because the suffering of carving solid steel has only just begun. Thank you for watching, and a big thank you as ever to today's sponsor, which is Raid Shadow Legends. Check them out in the description below.